After I spent around 55 hours on my first playthrough, I can now summarize my general thoughts about the game. It's not a big secret that I'm a Piranha Bytes fan, but I'll try to be objective as much as possible. Elex is a massive game and you won't see everything that it has to offer after your first playthrough mainly because of the three different factions you can join, different choices and consequences. Unlike some games that give you the illusion of choice, I really felt that in Elex choices really matter and the game always notifies you when your actions will have consequences down the road, although I failed to notice some of the quote unquote far reaching consequences that the game warns you about sometimes, which leads me to believe that we can import the saves in the sequel when it comes out, but we'll talk more about this later. At first, I really didn't like the main character, but later on as I progressed through the game more, I grown to like him a lot actually. I like the idea of the cold system that changes Jack's emotional state. My intent was to be more emotional and to decrease the cold level as much as possible, but sometimes my cold level gone up instead, because apparently I've chosen an emotionless answer. I wish that the answers were clearer so that you can easily tell what you're choosing. Also, I wanted to see the numbers for your emotional level, but I heard that the new patch will bring that option. Despite that, I finished the main quest with enough emotions to choose the path that I wanted. The setting of the game is really unique and the story in general was pretty interesting. The ending made me want to see more since it kinda ended on a cliffhanger and it left a bunch of questions unanswered. If you watched any of my Elex videos you know that I was a berserker. That style really appealed to me the most since I love the fact that I can shoot the arrows at the guy who is shooting laser beams or flamethrowers at me. It might lack logic sometimes but adding the ability to draw mana from Elex, berserkers are able to build magic which evens the chances they have against superior technology although I actually didn't use magic at all in this playthrough. A long story short, I just wanted to be an archer slash two-handed berserker. Goliath, the city of the berserkers, is a sight to be seen. It feels like a really big village with vertical levels and most importantly it feels very alive. That's mostly for the fact that Piranha Bytes always know how to nail the atmosphere uh, with music and 24 hour NPC schedules. They sleep, work and hang out in the inn at night. That might seem like nothing special, but if you like immersion, you'll definitely appreciate that. Piranha Bytes did that for years in their games, ever since the first Gothic that came out in 2001. You can actually use this to your advantage if you want to steal something or simply if you wish to travel safely since the beasts are also sleeping at night. Now I want to talk about the gameplay. You have a lot of choices of how you want to approach combat. Like I mentioned earlier, I didn't use magic at all and I was a berserker. I used the bow a lot and the two-handed weapons. You could do totally the opposite thing that I did and use magic only. Or maybe mix it up. Your faction choices will also affect your playstyle and weapons you can use and upgrade. There's one-handed weapons, two-handed weapons, shields, bows, crossbows, all kind of guns, bombs, etc. etc. I like the difficulty curve and I like ultra difficulty since even with my fully upgraded weapons, I still feel the threat from some stronger enemies but yet I know I can wreck them with a few swings or a few arrows. You're really strong in the late game but yet not invincible. I can't say that for lower difficulties but you have a few more separated options that you can tweak to your liking like setting the aggression level. I believe that hardcore and casual players as well can enjoy the gameplay. The struggle at the beginning will make you appreciate your progress later on and it's really satisfying. I know it can be a hard game to get into, but when you finally break the barrier, you won't let go easily. I have made a bunch of combat guides, but I do think there are some problems with the combat in general. While you can use the iframes of the dodge and evade to negate all the damage from almost any attacks in the game, the actual hitboxes can be really bad sometimes, especially on some beasts. Timing is everything, you have to time everything right, your attacks, dodges and evades. In order to time it properly, you'll have to learn how these hitboxes work. So that's what I did. Instead of raging how the combat is broken, I tried to game the system and it worked. Yes, you'll die a lot before you learn this, but it would not be fun otherwise for me. Like I said, even if you don't manage to learn all of that, when you get better gear and abilities, you'll still have a fair chance of success in combat. Get a weapon with a dot, hit and run, or throw grenades, use companions, lure the enemies to other NPCs for help, 
talk your way out of tough situations. It's an RPG after all, be creative, there's a ton of options. And it seems a lot of people don't get this actually. Now let's talk a bit about a few things that I didn't like so much and the things I wanted to see and I didn't. When I heard that Elex is gonna be that big, I was hoping I'm gonna see more towns and villages like in Gothic 3, but we only got a few cities. This is more because of the lore obviously, but still it kinda bothered me a bit. Also, when you steal something and you get away with it, no one will even mention that. I'm bringing Gothic 3 again, but in that game when you steal too much in one place, the guard will be like, hey, things are disappearing here, do you know something about it? You would say no, and he would respond something like, we're watching you. I think that was kinda cool actually and it made some sense. While I did play as an archer, I wanted to see similar mechanics like in previous PB games or something like in Skyrim when it comes to bow and arrow physics. This point and just press the button to shoot is really lackluster, you don't need to measure the distance then adjust your aim up or down. The sneak system also really needed some more work and it hasn't changed at all, it's still useless. Perhaps it's hard to do it in this engine, even a simple straightforward stealth system would be appreciated. Probably because Jax is not a sneaky dude, the lore reasons again. That's all on top of my mind at this moment, but I'm sure there are more things that bother me, although nothing major. Before we end this, I want to talk about the next Elex game and we know it's being developed as we speak because it has been confirmed. We have some rumors that the leap from Elex to Elex 2 will be something like the leap from Gothic 1 to Gothic 2. I hope they don't try to reinvent the wheel with the sequel. You have a great and unique setting, polish those rough edges, improve the animations and I can almost guarantee that even those who didn't like Elex will get interested. Even if you don't do that, I'm still gonna play it, but I would really like for them to reach the bigger audience and bigger media cover. Anyway, time for my second playthrough. I'm gonna roll an Outlaw Melee build and I hope you'll stick around to see that. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel for more content and I'll see you in the next one.